Yes, Alex? Let me tell you about Vindaman. I've swapped complete failure as a Kickstarter. Star Fox Command is the first game that you get to be Anthony Birch. The first of many fuck yous. Like a fucking Looney Tunes? stipulation was behave yourself and keep your dick in your pants and you have not followed through on that hey joseph robert buckley oh yeah 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 that's me hey what's up looks like i'm back on for another app that that bald-headed fuck wasn't able to make it so i'm here instead so i got a question sent in for no stupid questions asking if anyone had ever truly failed at survivor hmm and uh, it took me down a, a fun rabbit hole about terrible, terrible game shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, the awful human spectacle that what, we... you were just uh, uh, researching a little bit? And you yeah. You discovered I mean, some fun things that Americans have done. Exactly. Things that we've done to other people for entertainment value. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Joe, should we start with America or should we start with not America? Um, I, it really depends. I mean, the uh, not American stuff, it's like a lot more low budget, I would assume. Uh, it's just a, a lot more wacky almost. Um, here, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, I'm going to start with my uh, my my favorite Japanese game show. Mm, OK, so uh, there's a Japanese game show called Gaki no Sukai. Mm. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's a game show where uh, Japanese comedians are put into weird and wacky situations. If they laugh, a bunch of guys dressed up in military uniforms with balaclavas and hats and look like the bad dudes from the original Kamen Rider beat the fuck out of them. Oh, just with the tons? They just beat the shit out of them with, like, wooden planks and shit. Oh, okay, good, good. So anytime they laugh, they just whoop them. Well, that's that's a good way to stop a comedian from, like, laughing on stage. <laughs> it's a good way to kill the joy. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Cause... Beat the fucking joy out of them. Yeah, I, sometimes I have that problem on stage. You're like, you just want to smirk or something at something you said or somebody, something somebody else said. And yeah. You just got to knock that right out of you. <laughs> uh, speaking of getting things knocked out of you, um, a very popular genre in Japan uh, you know Takeshi's uh, Castle? Challenge? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Castle. I think it's the same a, guy. He had a Famicom game as well, Takeshi's Challenge. Yeah, that was and the it, game where you had to beat your wife. Yeah, you got to beat your wife, and then you had to take, like, the manual and, like, dunk it underwater to get clues. It's fucking whack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, whacking the wife. Well, yeah, the guy basically just wanted to make a not-game game, like Desert Boss or something. So, uh, Takeshi's Challenge is what, uh, if you ever watch G4... Uh, the other 50% of its programming that wasn't cheaters was just American Ninja, Ninja, Ninja or yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what that is. Where yes. you had uh, just like Double Dare and uh, all that shit, the Shrine of the Silver Monkey. Yeah. Uh, that's where this came from, which is a physical challenge where they just beat the fuck out of you. Yeah, with, like, fake yeah, rocks. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, with like foam. You just got the fucking shit pummeled out. You with foam. Uh, there's another good show where you had to. Um, climb a bunch of people who were oiled up oh, yeah. and the promo is just like this bald looking fucking uh like uh joe are, are you aware of like um that the japanese produce porn comics oh what uh i mean i may have uh, listen like browsing online through the night i may have stumbled across something where a, a young boy gets like a phone and he gets to hypnotize his mother and suck her tits and fuck her pussy and i may have seen something like that sure yeah i don't know but um, there's a guy who looks like this middle-aged dude that was slamming all, like, slabbering all over fucking uh, bikini clad. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and he just television. Yeah. yeah, he was just climbing. It was well, great. Yeah, he, no, he he actually had a great technique to get to the top. He just gripped the boob like a spider monkey <laughs> and just climbed up on top. <laughs> oh, and the giant bush, because they, they, none of them shave. So oh, he would just grab God. a handful of wiry Japanese bush <laughs> and shimmy himself up. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was reading one that's just called Slippery Stairs, and yeah. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a thing where they just cover like like uh, actual like hard concrete. concrete stairs with Crisco, and they just try to have five people climb up them and fall and knock everyone else down, <laughs> get a fuckload of concussions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just bust open your knee and bleed in front of ten thousand people, and they're all just <laughs> chanting and laughing. <laughs> Uh, 
another good game show in Japan. Um, I'm gonna butcher the fuck out of it, but it's Downtown No Gaki No Sukai Ya Arahende. Mm. Is it kind of like uh, Downtown Abbey, like uh, a bunch of upper class British women uh, becoming monks in monasteries? And uh, stuff? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's the exact same as that. Except it's a quiz show, and oh. the winner gets to shove his ass in the other person's face. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Uh, candy or not candy? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. One I that's, that. Yeah, where you got a bunch of people. Uh, there's a theme with a lot of these Japanese game shows that they almost always have comedians on them, hmm. which is much smarter than how they do it in the U.S., which we'll get to in a minute. But um, they have these comedians go around this room and try to find what's made out of candy. It yeah, can be yeah, anything. Yeah. It can be a shoe. It can be uh it I can saw be... a woman just biting into a table. Yeah. Uh, there's a and if they get it wrong, they get blasted in the face with a bunch of bullshit. So there's like a guy sucking on like <laughs> tentatively sucking on a picture frame. Yeah. And as soon as his mouth leaves it, he gets blasted with air. Yeah, I'm like I know oh, shit, this wasn't candy. That guy who like bites the door handle off, then mugs the camera. That mm. kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I there was one, it was like a game about like sleeping. And, like, basically, um, there would be, like, they would just film women sleeping, and then they had to wake up as cutely as possible. And then if they if they were too grumpy, um, they could actually throw just, like, a pie in their face. <laughs> uh, so we're going to hop across the country a bunch. Um, let's yeah, go yeah, back to, let's, well. let's go back to the, to, uh, the U.S., um, and you told me about this show. It was on Fox, the greatest channel on, in American Yo, history. Oh, it's amazing, yeah. You just get to watch Wapner and then go on over to fun things like the Cleveland show. Yeah, and then there was a show called Seriously Dude, I'm Gay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me tell me about Seriously Dude, I'm Gay, Joe. Uh, so basically, they had to, um, they had to, like, basically convince, like, everybody in their life that they were actually gay to try to win money. And then that was just the show. You just had to pretend to be gay and ostracize yourself from everyone you knew back in the time when it wasn't acceptable to do that. And you won, like, $50,000 or something like that. Yeah, I mean, shit. $50,000? Shit, I'd do it for fifty. dollars yeah, 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 I'd be like, yo, yo, dad, can I suck your dick? <laughs> I'm gay. I'm gay, man. You sound like a Rick and Morty character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go. I think I would be great as like a Justin Roiland type guy. Like, oh, oh man, can I suck penis? Stop. It. I'm suck penis itis, man. Stop it, Joe. Get a fucking no, d- but Jesus Christ, that's how I breathe. I have to suck penis to breathe. Stop it. Okay. So they had a follow up show that was called Playing It Straight. Oh. In which there, it was like a bachelor show where there was one girl and then there was like 12 eligible bachelors, mm. but 11 of them were gay. Mm. And so what she had to do is she had to narrow it down to who she thought was straight. And then once she made her decision, if she was correct, then her and the straight man would split the prize pool. And if she was wrong, then the gay man would get it all. Yeah. Gay man takes everything again. Yep. Once but, again. Okay. Here's what I would do if I was in that situation. If I was a woman. In order to test them, here's what you, you would do. You would put on NASCAR, right? You would say, yeah, yeah, come on, we're having a date. And you put on NASCAR and, like, rips, like, chicken, just big, giant chicken wings. And you're just, and I'm going to go, yum, 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 yum. And you see what the guy does. And if he's daintily picking up, like, a chicken wing, he's just biting a little piece of meat off of it. He's not interested in NASCAR. There's no way that man's straight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go straight in NASCAR. You'll go no, right exactly. You go left. Yeah, if you go straight, you're going to wind up killing 89 people in the stand, which happens every occasionally. Oh, speaking of killing several people in the stands, another show on Fox was called Boom. Mm. Um, it was, I swear to God, I'm not making it up. It was an Iraqi game show mm. about defusing a bomb. Oh, okay. And Fox was going to put it on air one year after the Boston bombing. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I actually have a good idea for, like, a game show, actually. Okay. It's called, Oh, Shit, 9-11's Happening Again. <laughs> and what you do is, you go to uh, an airport, and, like, you just get, you, you wait until you're all settled in the plane and flying. And then there's just an Iraqi man who's the host, and he's like, it's time to play. It's America's most explosive game yeah, 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 show. Yeah. Oh, fuck, 9-11's happening again. Yeah, 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 and they have to just figure, they have to solve clues that the Iraqi man gives them in order to, like, defuse the bomb. And they, whenever they land, if they all uh, survive, they get $10,000 each and a voucher to fly again. 
<laughs> vouching to fly at Southwest Airlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just whatever that airline was. It just beat that doctor unconscious and removed him from the plane. Because <laughs> you know your safety is 100% in their hands. <laughs> One of the challenges is that there's a... There's a terrorist on the wing of the plane. You have to go out <laughs> with to... those giant Q-tips. You got to beat them off the airplane. Yeah, plane. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, well, I was gonna say like an NES zapper. You have to try to, <laughs> yeah. yeah, shoot them all before they get to the plane. You got to shoot yeah, down the drones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a very good uh, game show in Russia. It was incredibly popular. Uh, Joe, was your fucking phone ringing? No. Okay. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> your ringtone would be like the fucking Metal Gear Solid theme. Oh yeah, like. Yeah, like that. It would be the Kirby, like... Yeah. It's Yoshi. Yeah. It's Yoshi. Well, whatever. But uh, it was called Paravat. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> uh, the English name is The Intercept. So traffic police are hated in Russia. Absolutely, they're disgusting. They, uh, they will over-arrest people, and then they will take thinly-veiled bribes. I, it was like it would basically be if the TSA was just blasted, passed out on the floor on vodka, and they still had to try to do their jobs. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. So the carjacking was very, very high. Crime rates for it were fucking way up there. So they're like, okay, well, here we'll make a show. And what they did was they would give a contestant the keys to a car somewhere in the real streets of Moscow, and they had to take that car and they had to steal it, you know, go in there, start it, and then they had to survive 30 minutes before the police, before they were pulled over. Yeah, and arrested. So, uh, what people would do is that, uh, um, the only one I know of that actually survived... Oh, it off? Yeah, what he did is, because the cameramen don't know where they are. There's mm-hmm. a camera inside the car, and then after it, they go and they get shots of, like, the street. You know, yeah, they yeah. have the car go through it and all that. And, uh, what he did was he got on a... He, he put the... He put it on a train... And he had, like, the ticket for the thing to go on the train. And then, as soon as it started filming, he bought a second ticket on a train going the exact opposite parallel, like, direction. Yeah, yeah. And so he just got out of Moscow immediately, and he was so, he totally, like, immediately won. Oh, yeah. Because they all went after the, the other train. Yeah. Well, and also, it would be out of the, uh, uh, the district, or whatever you call them. Like, out of their yeah. jurisdictions. And the other important thing about the show is that they had to follow traffic laws. Hmm. If they ran a red light, or they did something bad, they had to stop the car for 60 seconds. Uh-oh. If they accidentally hit a grandma in a wheelchair, they have to stop for 60 seconds <laughs> yeah. and then start back up. So uh, what would happen is that uh, at, at its peak, there were 60 million viewers. Game of Thrones, at its peak in America, got 13 million, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, fucking I think, three times that. Yeah. I think MASH was, like, it's the biggest one ever. I, I don't even know why it is, though. Probably, like, 200 million or something nuts, I don't know. Yeah. However many, all those boomers are fucking dead now. No one watches MASH. There's Here's, too many asterisks in the name. I can't follow. Here's the thing about old people. One time, I, whenever I was working, I saw an old man just fall into the fountain because he was trying to tie his shoe, and I just laughed for a minute. <laughs> I, it's great to see an old person get hurt. There was a um, an elderly person at my work that um, she refuses to go through the drive-thru. She always goes to the, um, mm. like, walks inside the store. Every time she does, we have to have like three people around her, like a human shield, because she constantly well, falls. Wobbly. Yeah, constantly All falls. Oh, just piece of shit. I just you really dealing with them. You just really want to knock their block off one day, like yeah, like that. That's what I teach grandma. <laughs> That's only medicine you're given. Uh, a yeah, punch. capsule pill of punches. <laughs> five five capsules. Yep. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Curl into a fist, though, it's only like four, because you don't, you don't hit them with the thumb. No, you can hit them with the thumb, all right? You could jam the thumb in their mouth and just go... Yeah, they can't bite you, they don't... Yeah, uh... they got no teeth. <laughs> but anyway, so this show actually had the backwards effect. People were cheering on the criminals. Yeah, I mean, as I... you should. I mean, <laughs> if I saw a criminal, I'd probably cheer him on. What am I going to do? Say, oh, yeah, go police. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was actually like a PlayStation One game that volunteered to pay for everybody's speeding tickets on like the day of the release of their new racing game because you would be rushing out to go buy it. <laughs> I forget what it was though. <laughs> I like that strategy. Yeah, we'll pay the fines for your break for you. Breaking yeah, 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 the yeah for the speeding tickets on this day. <laughs> what was that game that uh, was on Fox News where it was like this really shitty? Uh, uh, porn game from like 2001 where like it was about like a uh, subway 
Ray Play. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the most famous one. Yeah. It, it just, they, they, it, pay your, they pay your sexual assault court fees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, because it's just like, it's like one of those shitty, like, Eraj games or whatever, and it's just a man molesting, like, a woman and your two adult daughters, but not really adult. They look like children. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that there's um there's a youtube video of a guy playing um it's like some game where like you you bathe like an anime girl mm. but it, the hands are vr yeah and so you just beat the show oh, yeah, the just punching her, yeah. <laughs> i would love to play like a, a hentai game where you bathe like a woman but she's just incredibly hairy like a sasquatch or something so and you, you have to like shave grab- her as well <laughs> Yeah, and you just have to bathe under the armpit. You have to try to you have to try to warm your way through the hair to get oh. in the armpit. Jesus, and it has like Breath of the Wild like grass texture, like it's that good. <laughs> and you can burn it off. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The wind eventually <laughs> burns it away. You can start. It's got a chemistry engine, so at yeah, some yeah, point yeah, yeah, it yeah. lights on fire for the static electricity. Well, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you like combine like the shampoo and like the the <laughs> matches, you like just make napalm <laughs> to burn this hairy girl, Agent Orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, oh. There was a. Uh, Oh well, you wanted to do more American stuff, right? I've got some Japanese stuff I researched. Yeah, there was a um, a show in America. It was in the um, uh, there was a few really really terrible shows. I'm gonna give three of my favorites. Oh yeah, uh, one of them was It's Worth What, hmm. which was it was the same fucking come the same channel that had the prices what the prices <laughs> the well, prices yeah, yeah, yeah. what the prices what. The price. the price is what? Eight dollars for a fucking jar of candy? What? Do you think I'm Bill Gates? What? What? Oh, no. oh, no. oh you think I'm fucking Willy Wonka? Yeah. But <laughs> it's so the price is right is like real life things like grocery yeah, yeah, yeah. carts and like cars and yeah, shit. yeah like i don't know some plumbing like what's this plumbing worth eight dollars a knife to neuter and spay your cat yeah but it's worth what was antiques mm. which they were like antiques and precious items which don't have any actual value no, all no based on really. what the contestants yeah, thought they were worth yeah so you would just have like fuck you moments where the 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 game show would just decide oh well actually this mirror's worth more than this and it's like what yeah. the fuck are you talking about yeah 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 <laughs> it's just whatever it would go for at auction and these things so rarely go up for auction it's hard to get a price for them yeah what i would like is a, a reality or like a game show called oh no my antiques and it's said exactly like that and you have grandmothers <laughs> what did, okay let me take a guess of what i think this okay. is it's um it's uh they find a hoarder grandmother <laughs> and then what they do is they give you 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 have you have two you have three different stages of items you can start with a like a like a dig site hammer mm. a claw hammer or a sledgehammer and then you get money for just Breaking all of her hummels. <laughs> yeah, my idea was going to be you have three grandmas come into a studio with like just a like a bear, like a wheel, um, like a uh, just like a cart full of their most prized belongings, like all their collector's plates and like little glass figurines of like yeah, the naked the, babies like smooching each other. Yeah, their collector's plates of Hercules <laughs> from fucking yeah, McDonald's. 1993. <laughs> they got the fucking Winnie the Pooh glasses from Burger King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Burger King that like they actually, they couldn't sell at Burger King they had to toss them out because children were choking on them. Yeah, because of all the lead paint. Yeah. Um, but no, and then what you do is you have like a new comedian. You They come in and they have to answer qu- questions right, the comedians do. And then if they get one wrong, they have to smash something in front of the three grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> they just have to smash something precious that the grandma's own. <laughs> Which you you lose if your grandma. Yeah, like each team's grandma. You got three grandmas that yeah. you either lose if they lose all of their items or they die from a heart yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just accidentally have a stroke from seeing their precious things broken. Which is them. really unfortunate when, yeah, when they just have a stroke and it's unrelated to anything you did. So you, <laughs> yeah, get disqual- you get blamed. <laughs> So if the producers think you're getting too close to winning, they'll just shoot a dart in the grandma's back <laughs> and she'll die. <laughs> yeah. And then, but you could have like different ones, like uh, like uh, oh my antiques, like twins edition or like grandpa's edition or grandpa's. baby's edition. Grand- baby's edition <laughs> isn't ever you like take like their like pacifiers and like their bottles and something. You just smash them in front of the baby, but that baby's got no idea of what's going on. <laughs> There was a there was a game show called Bet on Your Baby oh. where uh, you had two to 
three and a half year olds and you would bet money like a fucking yeah, horse race. Yeah, yeah. You'd bet money on like, I think my child's gonna shit himself and start screaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's imagine what I would imagine what happens like whenever dads have to just like babysit a couple kids at once. Is if you have three dads in a the room, they're just gonna start gambling, smoking. <laughs> they're like, yeah, I bet mine will punch yours. <laughs> <laughs> let's give I bet, them I bet yours is gonna turn out gay yeah let's give them paps let's give them paps <laughs> here here I got the paps put some in it's pacifier <laughs> it's a pacifier now yeah 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 uh, some of the other fantastic America game shows um, moment of truth <laughs> which is a snuff film game show oh okay what they did is they would ask the contestants 50 questions before they went on air, they would have to answer them all correctly. Okay. You know, answer them all truthfully, because it was about their life. And uh, you just get to sit there and watch people talk about their deepest flaws. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only lady to actually win the $500,000 grand prize, her last question, she accused her father of statutory rape. Oh, wow. Well. That's so, gonna make Thanksgiving a bit awkward. <laughs> not with five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, no, it's like it's like that Clarissa comic. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say on the pod? <laughs> Clarissa is a uh, a comic about a molested child. It's it's like basically the perfect all American family from the fifties, but the father is molesting the daughter. And then there's a Thanksgiving comic, which is the first one he wrote. And the the comic ends with like the mother's like, "Oh come on, Clarissa, why don't you say thanks?" And then she just says, "I'm not going to pretend that Daddy didn't fuck me." Yeah, it's a pretty great comic. Yeah, 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 it's cool. It's it like really a brings a web comic. Yeah, it brings some fucking smiles to your face. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I read nothing but Clarissa and Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and Crossed. I'm pretty cool. <laughs> uh, do you re- do you also enjoy Rick and Morty? No, I don't read those comics. I think the art style's a little bit uh, Palladian. <laughs> Jesus, fuck off. Yeah, yeah. I only read books from Garth Ennis and cool people like Alan Moore. Uh, another show. I got two more American shows. Okay. Uh, this one is from the 40s. It's called Queen for a Day. It was a radio mm-hmm. game show. What they would do is they would have housewives call in and just talk about how they're in abusive relationships. Oh, cool. Because what the game show was that you would call in and you would say, I've had, so- I've had the worst day. And then the one who had the worst day would win like... It was either a bunch of money or they won, like, a vacation. Mm-hmm. So you just call in and you talk about how your husband beats you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just get to hear all these women tell these awful personal life stories for money. Yeah. But what if it's, like, a man queen who tries calling in in the 50s and he could be like, well, these guys, like, tried hanging me yesterday. Well, it was in the 40s. was before World War II. So oh, okay. None of that. Oh, no, no. Now that even existed yet? <laughs> nope. That's actually, I think, what happened is that the bombs dropped and then the gay atoms went in the air. Yep, yep, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I was going to say, though. Why do you think they called him Fat Man and Little Boy? Oh. It should have been Fat Man and Bottom Boy. Shut up, Joe. What? 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 I can't... What? What? Am I... I can't say my free speech on your podcast? No, you can't. You know what you can do is you can listen to me talk about The Chamber. Mm, okay. So The Chamber, it would never actually aired... Um, because it was too dangerous for human life. Oh, okay. Oh, they just try to trick children into putting a fork in the electric socket for money. <laughs> bet on your baby. I bet my child's gonna yeah, kill yeah, himself yeah. with that electrical outlet. Yeah, here, come on, Johnny. Here's a fork. <laughs> uh, what the chamber was was it was a it was a general knowledge trivia mm-hmm. show, right? But the thing was that you had to choose the hot chamber or the cold chamber. Mm. I want to go in the hot chamber because there's probably a bunch of chicks with like their boobies out and stuff. That'd be pretty hot. Okay, so so what you had to, so we're gonna go with the hot chamber. Okay. And I'll tell you what the cold chamber. <laughs> they is just put well. rats in your bottom. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. So so what you have to do is you put in this situation. You have to answer trivia questions. Okay. You get two wrong in a row, you lose. Yeah. How or many Beatles were there? Or <laughs> I'll get to you're them. You're fucked. <laughs> I'll get to them. Okay. Or if your um your heart stops, or. Um, the medical site on staff deem that you're not, <laughs> that you're not alive anymore. <laughs> you get wheeled out. <laughs> you get thrown. The chamber just you lose out. automatically. <laughs> so uh, the hot chamber. This is the one that Joe chose. Okay. So you get strapped down into like. Have you ever seen the anti masturbation cross? That no, fake ad? I don't think I've seen that. It's like a child like laying <laughs> yeah, with his arms yeah. out in their uh, and he can't touch him with his little willy anymore. 
and uh, he's got like his arms uh, velcroed to the like to his sides, mm, okay. you know, like a cross. Because he keeps looking at his family photo album and getting a little busy with himself, if you know what I mean. So uh, the hot chamber, you're strapped into this chamber, you're strapped down to this chair, and there are real flames off to your side that are slowly going up and up and up and up and up mm. until it hits 200 degrees. <laughs> That's like that's basically like what my GPU was at before it just died at like one fifteen Celsius. I think I had to get a new one. <laughs> Did it what? One fifteen Celsius. And then it would shut off for its own safety. And I would have to go reboot it and try to do whatever I was doing on Chrome, like looking up gay porn or whatever. <laughs> so the hot chamber they would strap you in. The chair at first would just sit there and it would be really, really, really hot. Mm. And then they would start moving the chair in all sorts of directions. <laughs> start jabbing you with pot needles. <laughs> and then the chair would get wilder and wilder and it would get you very close to the flames. Yeah. And then, because there's like three stages. Mm. So first stage, you're in a chair and it's really, really hot. Second stage, chair starts moving around. And it starts simulating a, point six, a 6 a 6.0 magnitude earthquake. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> the earthquake could go up to an 8.5. Yeah, yeah. The chair would go up to never stopping moving. Yeah, sure. Oh, shut up, Google. Yeah, Google. What, you're spying on us again? What, <laughs> just because we were podcasting about how everyone in your organization is a war criminal? You've got to spy on us? <laughs> Get fucked, Siri. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right, I've been trying to explain well, the hot chamber for okay. fucking 10 minutes. All right, all right. Don't okay. be uppity with me. I mean, Google's the one they're erupting. Also, they reduce the oxygen in the room. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. You know what, though? I think I'll take the cold chamber because I don't like sweating. I'd I, I like a nice chilly AC room now. Okay, so the cold chamber. Uh, the cold chamber. Once again, you are strapped into your anti-masturbation cross. Mm, I could still probably find a way out of it and touch myself. <laughs> I would just... What I would do Use is... your thighs. Yeah, I would tuck my dick in between my thighs and just start... <laughs> just really wiggling at myself. And they wouldn't be suitable for air. But you couldn't do that in the cold chamber because it's so cold. Okay. So here's what the cold chamber does. So, again, strapped into a chair. There's no, there's an earthquake. They also, like, pump electricity through you to make your muscles contract. Mm. Uh, it's It goes down. It starts at um, 30 degrees Fahrenheit and it goes down to negative 20. Uh, they are... They spritz you in the face with water every 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And occasionally there are 160 mile per hour winds that <laughs> well, can blast in your face. I was going to say, occasionally it's just an intern's urine. And then again, earthquake. Oh, sure. And you have to answer questions about fucking, like... Yeah, I think the cold room's definitely not as bad. Yeah, the cold room's not as bad because you won't die. <laughs> yeah, your skin won't just melt off and render its fat into the chair, into the actual <laughs> chair. The video I saw, the guy's hair became an ice shell. Mm. There was no hair in it because he completely froze over. Mm, okay. So you have your muscles being contracted, you're getting blasted in the face of air, spritz with water, it's freezing cold, there's an earthquake, and your muscles are being forcefully contracted. Yeah, and then you just have to answer, like... You have to answer questions yeah. like, what is the name of this fat character in a red shirt? Elf! It was Elf! Oh! Oh, no. If you interrupt him, Joe, then he has to start the question over what? again. What? I knew it! I knew it before So you finished. have to wait until he goes, Elf? Alphabet, <laughs> Alfred, Pac Man, <laughs> and like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to answer answer correctly. It, it's fucked up because the the feed he saw yeah. was like inside of the of the chamber, and the guy's like shaking left and right, like he's getting fucking torn apart. Yeah, yeah. Oh movie. Christ! There's an icicle at my bum. <laughs> Basically, I'm in the cold room. <laughs> and they're asking him these fucking shitty ass questions, and one of them he's like the sc sc scholastic. I'm sorry, you need to repeat that. You need to focus. It's yeah, like you yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. So they should have a they should have a game show where basically they just have a bunch of teenagers on, on an overpass. And then they have bowling <laughs> balls, and whoever can hit a car wins eight grand. <laughs> eight grand in witness protection. Yeah, 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 yeah. They get you away from America. <laughs> we extradite them to Russia or someplace that doesn't extradite. <laughs> All right, Joe, do you have any more English ones you want to talk oh, about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a cool one called uh, Solitary. So oh, boy. Basically, what it is, is it's like a, it's a, it's a computerized voice. It's a lot like Hal or almost GLaDOS. 
Um, and, like, this is the only interaction you're gonna have for your duration on the show. Uh, you're in, like, basically, like, a small little pod room. There's nothing on the walls or anything. It's all temperature controlled. Um, there is a bed, but sometimes it retracts into the wall, so you can only get 15 minutes of sleep or so. Oh, that's fucked. And then you get as much water as you need, but very, very little food. Like, I think for a prize, one guy was just giving, like, an almond. <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> and basically, you have no idea how everybody else in the show is doing, uh... And, like, basically, for the game shows are especially fucked. Because, like, basically, you'll be, like, standing on one leg. And, like, a robot will be pricking you with a pin for just <laughs> eight hours. And you don't know if everybody else has given up. And whenever you give up, you're either done and, like, you're uh, safe from that round of elimination. Or maybe you won. Or maybe you're booted off the show. Or who knows what. Or maybe you won two almonds. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, no, that was just the show, and, like, uh, you could win, like, an extra night of sleep or something like that. Oh, my God. But yeah, 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 you would just be in a pod for, like, three months with no human interaction. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That reminds me of, uh, this, uh, really famous, uh, game show in Japan. Mm -hmm. It's called, uh, Denpa Shonen, and they were actually, like, a variety show. So they had a few different, they, they were on the air for four years, and they had four different shows. Yeah. I'll go over the less famous ones first, because they're still equally pretty fucked oh, up. Oh, okay. Uh, so, Susanoo Denpa Shonen. Uh, it's a variety show. It was on TV Nihon. Mm. Um, so, one of the shows was uh, they put two comedians on a desert island with no food, no water, no clue where the fuck they were. They didn't know anything. They were told they had to build a raft and get off the island to go back to Tokyo. Oh, it's like a fun family show, like Gilligan's Island. Yeah, yeah. So, after four months, they got off the island... <laughs> They were just surviving on rats in the meantime. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And then they told them, all right, here's a swan paddle boat. Now you need to go... Go back. <laughs> Your prize right. is waiting for you on the island. And then whenever they get there, they have a helicopter. Come take the raft away. <laughs> and they have to build another. It's, um, they had to go to China and India and Indonesia. So they had to... Paddle the boat. No, back to Japan. I don't think those places are very close to each other. <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah. They're very far away. At the very least, they're separated by a large body of water. <laughs> and then they're probably also separated by Chinese people with guns in the Chinese military just protecting their border, <laughs> trying to stop people in paddle boats from getting out. They're... Yeah. Uh, this show, another show they had, it was, uh, it was um, two Chinese... Well, I, it was either two or one. I don't remember. Some of those Chinese. Oh, okay. So they had no qualms with doing this. Oh, them. sure, 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 sure. Absolutely. Uh, so they had to hitchhike from the Cape of Good Hope, which mm. is at the very bottom of South <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's a, that's a good name. And then where with. do you think they had to hitchhike to? Uh, Uganda, uh, maybe like America. They had to hitchhike to America <laughs> over the water. <laughs> so they were given um, money for transportation that they could not use on food or water, of course. Mm. So they just had to beg in the street like a dog. Yeah. And they had to go all the way to the top of Norway. Hmm. So they had to hitchhike there. And after like a few months, they had to airlift well, one of the contestants out because he was going to die of dehydration in the yeah, Sahara yeah, yeah. Desert. Well, I, here's the thing. I'm an American, so I don't know if like those two places are like 100 miles apart or like next door to each other because it, it, it's, uh, it's all the same thing to me. It's other land. Yeah, n Norway's like between the Congo and Egypt, right? Okay. Yeah, I, that sounds right. Sure. I don't know. I know that there's like a bunch of like gorillas in the Congo. Like some chick had to go there to try to save them. Yeah. There's a movie about it. Uh, here's a here's a really really fun one they did. Yeah. So um, baseball is very big in Japan, right? Oh, it's sure. like like they fucking love it. They took it away from. Yeah, us. Yeah, I heard I heard something about that. Yeah. So and then we one... just took basketball away from the Japanese. Did they? Can you, no, no, no. But can you picture that? Like a bunch of like four foot five men just trying to dribble and do free throws. <laughs> Because <laughs> their subway system and so that's tiny. Americans can't fit in that thing. Nope, we're not allowed. We're not welcome. No, we're definitely not welcome because we're only, they have. We're the... only welcome if there's sarin gas in the fucking subway. Well, we're welcome if there's uh if they're if you're like a petite woman because those trains are renowned for molestation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. So the so they had this show. Uh, there's three different baseball teams. I don't remember the name of them. Okay, it's not important. The, the, yeah, it doesn't matter. The, the the Japanese dragons, the yeah, yeah, Japanese, the Japanese beetles, and the Japanese, and, the, and then the Neon Japanese. Genesis is <laughs> Neon Genesis Evangelion Z's. <laughs> That's that was actually like the most popular karaoke song in Japan forever. Jesus. Was the song to Neon Genesis. <laughs> so here's the so here's the fun part about this one. 
So what would happen is that they would be in three separate rooms. You know, fans with fans. Okay. So they had fans of A, B, and C all in their own individual rooms. <laughs> and then they just give them 10 cent beers and allow them to throw them at the <laughs> baseball players like we did in New York. <laughs> or Jersey or something. C batteries. Yeah. <laughs> they were just throwing batteries at Santa Claus. Santa tried to come out and do a nice thing for the children. And they just pelted him with rocks and D batteries and beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So okay. what they would do is they would all watch the games that are being broadcast at the same time okay. for their team, you know? And if their team won, they had a little party. They got food, water. Because again, okay, they're, not, nice. giving, they're not giving nice. food and water. Okay. So they're giving food and water and they have a little party. If there's a winning streak, then... And then then also they reveal a little bit of the person's face. Mm. Well, now, so what how, do you mean how often do they face? do a... Hmm. Well, that's just pretty interesting. Uh, they got yeah. a giant gas mask on or something. At the start, their faces are hidden. Mm. Their faces are just gone. So every time their team wins, their face is shown a little bit, and they get food and water. If they lose, power's cut off to the room. I was it's total no darkness, more, yeah. no food, no they water. They just let the cockroaches in. <laughs> if you get on a losing streak, you could be stuck in the dark for weeks yeah because i was gonna say like how how often do these people play baseball like uh every day they have like a new game every that's two why days? they had three teams so that they could alternate okay like, okay it's for rooms because yeah, like, makes sense room a so if their team lost and they don't have another game for a week yeah they're gonna sit in darkness dude i would be so fucking pissed at tom brady <laughs> then exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like you fucking cocksucker bumble it one more goddamn time and i'll fuck your child that's Do you think that's going to make it on the pod? <laughs> that's, what, that's what this show became. It became yeah, yeah, people yeah. going fucking ape shit. And uh, so I mentioned that they revealed their faces. Hmm. That's because in Japan, many, many game shows are populated by comedians. Yeah, and they really want recognition and shit. And... Yeah. Um, so their Denpa Shonen's most famous show was A Life of Prizes. Yeah, starring I've heard a of comedian that. named Nasubi, which mm. is eggplant. <laughs> is it because it's... What, was his nose so big or something? Or? No, his head was, like, really big. Oh. And when he stuck out his jaw in a certain way, he looked like an eggplant emoji. <laughs> he could just go up on stage in purple face. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, he entered a contest. Uh, all these people that get on Denpa Shonen, they entered a raffle to be like, hey, if you win this, you'll be... Yeah, you'll be on next season or something. You'll, you'll get an, a job at an entertainment show. Hmm. So the first show that Dunpa Shonen did was A Life of Prizes. And uh, Nasubi's name is, I'm going to fuck it up again, but it's Hamatsu Tomokai? Tama mm. Tamaki? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this happened in the late 90s. So Japan was like a decade ahead of us in how they did like internet stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's only now that people are like using emojis for like the thinking face and shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the internet is still completely shit in America. We have the worst internet speeds of every basically country out there. Besides, like, Uganda. I think you can even pay for better internet than we can get there. <laughs> so. It's just a matter of having money. So Nasubi won the contest, and what they did was they blindfolded him, spun him around a bunch, <laughs> and then took him into the car. Started and whacking him. at his <laughs> knees. <laughs> just fucking started shooting him. They executed him. Yeah, like uh, the ending of Casino, you just fucking wail on him, <laughs> baseball bat, <laughs> and bury him alive. So he was taken to this uh, this one room, really tiny apartment. They took all of his belongings. They took his clothes, food, water, every you know, all that's in the room. Yeah, they well, took all the spit well, out of his mouth because he might be able to swallow that later. Well, water, I mean, it's an apartment, so he had water. Yeah, that's good. Um, and he was told that he was going to be recorded. They don't know if it's going to be on TV. Change the tapes in these cameras every two yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. And here's a pen. Mm. There's a shitload of magazines. Yep. You have to win one million yen worth of prizes from writing contests in order to be let out of this room. Yeah, yeah. What is that? Like about 10,000 American dollars or Yeah, it's about 9,500, oh, okay. which doesn't sound like a lot, but the free it's a, shit that you a pain win in the ass, yeah. Like think about writing contests like, "Oh, Ugh. you'll win a year's supply of Lego magazine." Oh boy, that's $40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah m retail price of $8 for yeah. all for all 12 issues. So, they didn't give him anything. Hmm. Except for the first two weeks. Yeah, because yeah. even the producers are like, 
Yeah, it'll take some time to get yeah. the mail. Yeah, he can't get, like, he's not going to be able to get anything. Yeah. So they gave him, like, bread. Mm, okay. So he had a little bit of food for the first two weeks, but once he got his first food item in, they cut him off. Yeah, yeah, His yeah. first food item was protein packets. Oh, yeah. Um, that was it. I don't even know what, pr- just be like a powder that, like, weightlifters eat for, like, yeah. a bulk up, yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's all, that's all he had. Until, like, a few weeks later, he won some rice. Oh, yeah. And what they did was every week they would have it on, like, a different show, and it would just be a little 10-minute segment. Hmm. They would cut down everything he did that week, boop, a little 10-minute segment at the, end of a, at the end of an episode. Yeah. Ended up getting very, very popular. So eventually, they did a live webcam stream of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that became immensely popular. <laughs> Because yeah. it was up 24-7. And you could just watch him. And you could just watch him. And he was naked. So what oh, they did yeah. is they had technicians who had like a giant eggplant emoji. Yeah, they yeah, put yeah. it over him. They had to sit there with a pen on the screen for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would just be your shift is you have to cover this Japanese man's little penis. So what they would do is like whenever they would punctuate all of the stuff that happened with like wacky sound effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like big bubbly letters. Yeah. Because I've seen some of this footage and it's like he'll just be, he'll just be like strutting around and he'll be celebrating because he won like a child's bike and his penis will just be wiggling and back and forth. Yep. So he didn't know that he was being filmed or anything. He didn't know that he had an audience. Yeah, so yeah, So like yeah. he would get something. It would be genuine like he was super happy that he won a bike. You know, woo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like $200 bike. Woo, yeah. And then ride it around like twice and be like, <laughs> well, I can't really ride a bicycle in this apartment. Yeah, so. I can't really ride it. Yeah. Uh, one of the, see, he won like a television and he tried to hook it up, but the producers made sure he didn't have cable because they didn't want him to find his own show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd just be watching himself naked. <laughs> so uh, he, he would just win all these prizes and he would have, like he, in the entire time, it was 16 months that the show was on, he never won a single article of clothing. So he was well, naked I, the entire time. I saw that he won a pair of women's panties, but they wouldn't fit on his giant dangly body. Yeah, they were too small. So yeah. He couldn't wear them. Damn. Uh, but he would he, he would have all these moments. You get to see raw emotion with him because he didn't, yeah, know, yeah, his yeah. didn't know anything about what he was doing. Technically, he could have left at any time. Yeah, the door was unlocked, they said. Yeah, the door didn't, it wasn't, like, locked. He could open it and just leave. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it's, uh, well, that actually, it's almost like old boy, like, um, where, yeah, eventually, like, he just got burst through that shit. Yep. Old boy, uh, was inspired by... Oh, by that? By oh, story. sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, and I the opening scene in Portal 2 was inspired by old boy. I saw that, yeah. I mm-hmm. saw that the furniture's exactly the same, and that big painting and everything, yeah. Yeah. So Nasubi, uh, eventually he reached, he reached his, his, his prize. He, he got the 1 million yen. Okay. And, uh. I bet the winning prize is just something really dumb. Like he won, like, uh, he won, like, a, a, a voucher to go play pachinko for free in, like, a, in, like, a Tokyo Square, like, 800 miles from where he was. I'll be honest, I don't think he won any cash prize. Oh, nothing? Hmm. Nope, he just got, he just, he just, yeah, just kept getting garbage. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> So he uh, he reached his goal. Yeah. And then in the middle of the night while he was sleeping, the producers came in and just basically kidnapped him. <laughs> just yanked him. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, they yeah. blindfolded him, put him in a bag, put just him in a car. Taking a naked again. man somewhere. That would have been a tough uh, explanation if they would have been stopped by the police. <laughs> they just have a naked man in a bag who can probably no longer speak Japanese. He's been in our room for a year. <laughs> yeah, not being able to talk to anyone yeah. or anything. No, we assure you, he's famous. He's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so what they do is they kidnapped him, and then they brought him to Korea, and he went to a Korean carnival, and they said, this is your reward for reaching one million. <laughs> he just gets some cotton and candy and like some shitty pet. <laughs> As dispensers, he can win on the boardwalk. So they walked around, you know, they were filming him, you know, and then yeah, he's, he's it, whooping it up, he's laughing, he's going on the merry-go-rounds. So then uh, after the day at the carnival, after the day going around Korea, they did the same thing, blindfolded him, spun him around. Yeah. Then they brought him to another apartment that looked the exact same as his old one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they told him, now you, you are in Korea. Here's a <laughs> Korean to Japanese dictionary. Oh, yeah. You have to win the cost of your flight ticket back home. Yeah, yeah, because you got to top yourself every single uh, season. You have to. So what he did was he got very lucky, and within just a few weeks, he won, like, Spice Girls tickets, I think, <laughs> that he obviously couldn't fucking use. Yeah, he couldn't go see them. Um, some, like, gift receipts, like a $100 gift card or something. Mm. He won a bunch of, st- bunch of high-value prizes, yeah, so nice, he, like, nice. immediately got it. And they're like, oh, no, 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 you have to, get, you have to do business class. 
Mm-hmm. And then, oh, no, 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 you have to do first class. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you have to do first class, and it's, it's, it's a return And you gotta pay for everybody on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Shit like that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> eventually, after, I want to, yeah, after 16 months or so, he did, they reached it, and once again, came in the middle of the night, kidnapped him, blindfolded <laughs> him. Kicked him a little bit, just for fun. Brought him back to Japan. Set him down inside of his apartment again. He just, oh. Yeah. He got up and, like, immediately started taking off his clothes and sat back down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the walls fell out, and he was surrounded by a huge, like, crowd. And it is the saddest thing, because he has no... (laughs) Have you ever talked to someone with dementia or Alzheimer's? Absolutely. In my job, every single day, these old fucks just come in. They want to see the the peanut butter man, and then (laughs) they just don't know where they are. (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> no yeah you, you've seen someone with Alzheimer's you've seen Chris Chan's mom oh absolutely oh, she, where she just has like she doesn't recognize what's happening in her eyes yeah oh absolutely she's just gone yeah. she's just gone as a person but you know she basically ruined the child and this is her reward now is yeah so Nasubi is like looking like he doesn't understand what's happening yeah and he's like my house fell down oh yeah and everyone's like laughing with him yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's what happened in Nasubi mm. um, and well what did he do after that kill himself <laughs> no it actually has a good ending oh, but, okay. like, the show was so popular that there was ramen commercials that were literally just him like when he would eat a bowl of ramen and like there would be a close up of his face he's going ding oh, yeah, and yeah. they would use the footage to make it as the advertisement because it was so immensely popular yeah 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 and it is straight up the Truman Show. Like, in Truman Show, where they have the cutouts to the real world and people are watching, there's, like, people have, like, merchandise all over the walls or watching yeah, in yeah. bars and shit. Well, it, it would That's be it, was. it would be the Truman Show if Truman was just kept in, like, a room and naked and starved. Yeah. And there was no one to interact with. Yeah. He, it was just him. And, uh, he would have moments. Like, he'd have those moments where he's, da- he's doing, like, his happy dance, you know, woo, look at me go. And then, like, there would be weeks where he just didn't win anything. And he would just be looking at the camera and, like, no joy on his face, yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. And they would like try to salvage it for TV by putting like wacky sound effects and audience laughter, like big bubbly letters. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's obviously like at the lowest point in his life. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just looking down at the floor, just like masturbating and crying. And they had to put like they you, like you know those clouds that like splurt out rain, like the gif. They had to put that over it, like <laughs> choo, 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 and lightning. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh. The oh, thing that hurt oops, him. I accidentally got my camera going. <laughs> the NSA wants in. So, uh, one of the worst things that happened to him personally when he found out that it was on the air is that he promised his father, a police officer, mm. that he, his father was like, You can become a comedian, but never get naked on TV. <laughs> yeah, that's my one rule. <laughs> you one bring rule. great shame upon the family if they ever see how tiny our penises are genetically. <laughs> we have the smallest penises in Japan than the Sube clan, so you are not to show the outside world. <laughs> We're sporting 1.1 inches. You are never, ever to take those pants off. <laughs> so what ended up happening, um, when he was in Korea, he was when they told him, like, oh, you're gonna do this, you know, take you out of the show, they're like, oh, you're you're gonna do you're gonna do this now, you're gonna be in Korea. He's like, absolutely not. I'm going home. Fuck this. Fuck you. Yeah. And then he's like, well, I'm naked. Yeah, I have yeah. no money. I have no way to call home. What am I supposed to do if I just, if I keep saying no, like they kind of have the chips here. So I I guess I'll just go on with it. Yeah. 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 Uh, what ended yeah, up in happening? For a penny uh, in for a pound. That's what Ben Frank said. Yep. I bet. I don't know. Ben some old Franklin, British fuck. that fucking pedophile. Uh, what, he's got a mouthful of wooden teeth? Why is that? Is he going <laughs> to chew on a boy's toes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so That's after why... after the show finished, uh, his journals were published, and they became like an instant bestseller, because hmm. it was his journal that he kept throughout the whole show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, uh, it's like Anne Frank's diary, except if Anne Frank was just a naked 30-year-old man on TV. <laughs> um. What he's doing now, um, he it did actually work very well for his career. Oh, sure, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he starred in a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies. Um, he actually played a character in Common Rider Double, 
hmm. named Watcher Man, who had a bicycle that he won in a write-in contest. Oh, okay, yeah, so they tied him back. He could have gone on, like, Conan and shit, maybe, yeah. here? Yeah, he, he would have been the equivalent of, like, he, he became a B-list celebrity. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, much yeah. what happened. I mean, that kind of sounds like uh, Mark Borchardt, where uh, they filmed him for the American movie, and it's just him failing to make his film. And then he was just on Letterman and then Family Guy and shit afterwards. Yeah. He just became famous for his own failure. Yep. Um, what, uh, it's kind of a good ending for him, though. I mean, his career went off. Yeah, he yeah, was sure. able to do what he wanted. Um, now he is a mountain climber. Mm. And he actually climbed Mount Everest. Well, that's one of the easiest ones to do. <laughs> Fuck Basic- off. No, no, no. Here, no. <laughs> Quote from Joe, who's never even walked up a steep I've incline. walked up stairs. But listen, here's what's happening. <laughs> stairs, that- the steepest incline. They are very steep. But here's what's happening. There are so many rich people trying to climb Mount Everest right now that there are... Well, not right now. This has already happened. The, the month for climbing mountains is over. Uh, but there were bodies just piling up because it was so packed that they couldn't move. And they were just dying up there because so many people... <laughs> We're trying to climb up Mount Everest because it's so easy to get up there, basically. I don't believe that fucking, happened. I don't believe like five I'm people kidding. died this year because there are too many people on Mount Everest. I don't fucking. I know that there's a lot of poop on Everest. Well, there's just dead bodies all over because I can't really move them. There's no good way to move a body off Mount Everest and just all the garbage and shit. And it's just a wasteland. It's like a dead tourist wasteland, <laughs> and it's like the <laughs> shittiest mountain that you can climb now, but it's the most popular one, so everybody goes to try to do it. It keeps shit all over Yeah, the absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just killing animals and leaving the bodies up there of, like, buffalo or something. <laughs> <laughs> An Everest buffalo. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's up there. Like, An uh, Everest buffalo is what we call a fat tourist. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the one that's the most successful at climbing, because they have three Himalayan and pushing them up. That's what uh, they do. They just hire, like, Himalayan guides to do most of the work They have them. a lot of fucking plinth. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. Yeah. Take me high on Mount Everest. I want to see the top. Well, and yeah, basically you have like a... I want to poop on the top of Everest. <laughs> on the very top. I'm going to poop on the pile of other people's poop. And it'll be the highest thing that's ever been on. I'm, I'm going to hold the duty in my hand. And it's going to be the highest poop. Get underneath me. I want to climb you. But basically, once you're up at the tippy top, you have a very narrow window to get off it because the air is so shallow up there. And people are just dying because they're jam-packed up there. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so with game shows, yeah, let's so, <laughs> uh, let's bring it back over to America, maybe. So yeah, yeah, with game shows, we the human spectacle. We derive enjoyment from seeing other humans in pain and suffering. Oh, absolutely, yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because think of what a like a drama is. Think of what a movie is. A movie cannot exist if conflict with the main character is not happening, if you're not seeing them pull and struggle against, like, the reins of their own humanity. The movie itself can't exist. I mean, like a Deadpool. Deadpool doesn't happen if Deadpool doesn't have to go do something that Deadpool doesn't want to do or thinks he can't do or whatever. And even though there's no actual drama in that, like, the basis of that is still in the story. Mm Mm-hmm. What? You know, like, uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like picture this picture this I'm, I'm Joe Buck with a movie maker I'm gonna make a movie about a grandma who slipped and fell in the tub and now she can't get out and she's just shitting and nobody knows she's in there and that that's gonna be the struggle is can grandma get out of the tub does she just just like turn on the water and float because she weighs two pounds now <laughs> oh yeah floats, yeah, yeah. Out, floats out the top floats out like when you like clog a toilet with your own shit and no, actually, like you flush and it goes up and up and up and then it spills over the lip of the thing. Actually, everything's gotta be interconnected now. So to sell this, I'm gonna make it so Pennywise is in the drain and he's like whispering girl, like, yeah, you'll never get out of the tub. Uh, you'll never get out of the tub. And he's like poking his little clown fingers up off the top of the drain. And then he's gonna float her out with a bunch of balloons because she's eventually going to give birth to one of the children that's gonna defeat him. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah and you really guy, brought it back. It's very scary. It's a very scary clown. Well, I, I saw that they, they had, like, an extremely direct reference to the thing, where basically the clown just, like, his head comes off, and then, like, big, the like, light. spider legs come out of it, and somebody says, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. It's just a line from the thing. Oh, so okay. everybody got great enjoyment from that. Yeah. Because <laughs> they said something from a movie that already happened. It's like when I saw Ad Estrada, and it was two hours of looking at fucking Brad Pitt cry. Yeah. I mean, ordinarily, I would see that. Like, uh, he's very good in Fight Club. He's good in... Basically, if you stick him in front of David Fincher in the camera, you'll get something good out of Brad Pitt. I don't but... even know who David Fincher is. Uh, he did Alien 3 for the oh. studio, and everybody loved that one. 
<laughs> killed off a child in the opening minute. Nice. Yeah, they had no script whenever they were filming it. So, uh, Joe, any other uh, game shows that you want to you wanna mention or any other uh, great moments in here? Oh, fuck, I almost forgot to mention. Um, here. Yeah, what's yours? What's yours? Because I got one. Um, so there's been uh, two American game shows that had a serial killer on them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, John Cooper showed up on the show Bullseye where you throw darts. Oh, okay. And then after the show aired, four months later, he killed a husband and wife couple. Yeah, sure. But he didn't do it while he was, like, uh, bowling or, like, uh, throwing darts. I don't know. That's a pretty fast turnaround. Because as soon yeah. as it aired, you know, only a few months later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rodney Alcala, you might know him. Yeah. Uh, he appeared on The Dating Game in the middle of his murder spree, where he killed between 8 to 130 women. Hmm, okay. So he's just on The Dating Game. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that clip. Now, in terms of just, like, spectating on pure human misery, I mean, there was a Japanese cannibal. Who just killed, like, oh, I think, raped a woman. Yeah. And some kind of technicality got him off. And then he was just like, like writing oh, it wasn't books. The, it wasn't the technicality what that happened, got what him off. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was, was the rape and murder and eating of the woman. <laughs> yes. He was just like on talk shows and he had his own like uh, books and like everybody wants to get a piece of the cannibal now. I know there was a show with him. It was a, it was a, do- a series of documentary pornographic films. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it was just a normal porno, but then he would tell them, I'm the man who. <laughs> murdered and cannibalized and raped that woman. Yeah, and just and then, describe it in detail. And then you, the camera would just look at her face as she cried. And yeah. that was porn in Japan. Jesus Christ. In terms of just getting pure sexual excitement out of a woman in pain, Japanese got everyone else beat hands down. <laughs> hands up and clenched into fists, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they just sound like they're emotionally stunted. Well, yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm. I, hey, the chick at Burger King's probably emotionally stunted, but she only gets paid eight dollars. <laughs> Maybe she should accuse her father of rape to win oh, five hundred thousand yeah, yeah, yeah. dollars on American 50, television. Yeah. <laughs> um, here over in America, I'm a big fan of uh, Fear Factor. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, good old Joe Rogan. It's kind of funny to me that, like, the modern-day philosopher podcaster is a guy who just used to laugh whenever, like, poor people that have to eat, like, bull testicles on, like, his show. I heard that um, in the testing for it, they would have interns do yeah. a lot of the shit. Yeah, $100 would, like, bill. He would pay them. Like, I'm sorry you had to eat bull testicles, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a <laughs> tough one. Um, yeah, no, it, like, I mean, that was definitely a show where basically, because it wasn't much money. It was, like, 50000 sometimes 100000 and it was just, like, poor people. And, like, the first challenge is, okay, you've got to, like, ride, like, a dirt bike over a hill. And, like, if you if you wipe out, you lose and you're off the show. And then the second challenge, you've got to drink piss out of a homeless man's <laughs> ass. We got, we had a homeless man piss in a bull. And then we gave him a piss enema. And now you've got to drink it out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then challenge three, uh, bowl of strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> challenge three is like basically you've got to come... eat a tailless whip scorpion. <laughs> no, no, no. It's never an eating challenge. It's always like you've got to drive a car over a hill into a helicopter, but save Jesus. somehow make that safe. I don't know. <laughs> you've got to like climb a net on a helicopter, and you've got bungee cords strapped to you. And if you fall off, you're eliminated. Oh, you know what I just realized? What's that? I literally didn't talk about if anyone ever survived for Survivor. <laughs> Oh, huh. so um, I would imagine okay. like an old man would just have like a heart attack or something or a fart attack. Yes. So, um, okay. On the French, on one of the French seasons of Survivor, um, a man was getting transported. It wasn't even. It wasn't being filmed. It was just going from like the the start to a, you know, to the filming location for the challenge, and they hit a swell, and the guy had a heart attack in the boat, and then he died in the hospital a few days later. Yeah. Yeah. Um. A few other, uh, there's a lot of times where on Survivor, people will get a puncture wound that becomes infected and they, they just gotta fucking leave before they die. <laughs> or do they have to amputate, like, their leg or something? Um, there's a show on Discovery called Naked and Afraid, which is just mm. Survivor, but it's got tits. <laughs> yeah, more nudity. Yeah. <laughs> what, is this the HBO Survivor? No, this is a Discovery. Oh, Discovery well. channel. I guess they're discovering, like, how naked you can be in the woods um, now. With that, with that show, uh, there was interviews I read where they were like, "We could hear the club music of the village that yeah, was a mile away." away. Yeah. <laughs> wow. One lady, she um, she couldn't um, she couldn't keep her potassium pills, mm. 
And like after a day or two, her kidneys were starting to shut down. Oh, so they, they just booted her off. The producers found salt mm. deposits in a nearby village. Oh, nice. Because you were supposed to like scavenge, you know, you don't have yeah, for anything. You, need, yeah. you get a few tools and that's it. You know, you get like a knife and like a little hatchet. That's all you get. Well, yeah, and then it kind of ends up being like The Sims 2, like tropical getaway, where you end up with like a whole hotel suite and you got like a raft and like a big like jacuzzi made out of wood. Yeah, yeah. Because those, those people always get like nice like rooms that they end up building for themselves. I like Survivor and that kind of shit. Yeah. Um, but the, the biggest difference, so Japan does, they, there was an adaptation of Survivor, like mm. a U.S. show that w- that broadcast in Japan. Yeah. And it fucking bombed. Because the U.S. Survivor, what happens at the end of every episode is they vote someone off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Japan has its own, like, Stranded Island shows. So in the U.S. one, it's about kicking people off. Mm. But in the Japanese one, it's about bringing more people on. Basically, it's about everyone as a group working together. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then waiting until the weakest link breaks off because they can't keep up. As opposed to the US one, which is like, you, I'm saying that you're the weakest. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So they're like, oh, this is a really negative show, which, I mean, they watched a man eat noodles and cry <laughs> yeah. for 16 months in a room with no pants on. But I mean, it, it's basically like the UK office compared to the American office. The first season of the American office did very poorly because it basically was directly adapted from uh, the UK office. And the UK office is a show about just the like bad people at heart working through a job that they hate and can't stand anymore next to people that they don't like. And they have no plans to get better because they realize that they are... Like, from birth, mediocre, and nothing will ever get better. That's very, like, rooted in UK comedy, is everything is shit, nothing can ever get better. <laughs> and, like, the end of The Office, the UK one, it, it ends with, like, the boss just crying and begging for his job back, and then the uh, the gym character in the UK office, like, the chick is just done with him forever. So that didn't translate over to America, they had to vastly change the show, they had to make Michael Scott into a likable character, which he isn't in the UK version, and... It's a basically but, a different show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, th- I think here in America, we kind of like to think that we can somehow come up on top whenever we're doomed from birth. Yeah. <laughs> doomed to mediocrity, or God forbid, having to host a fucking podcast. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, Joe, I would rather die. I would rather suck shit out of <laughs> yeah. a homeless man's asshole. Yeah, 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 for $10,000. No, 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 you suck the, the feces out of his asshole, and then you you come in second place and get kicked off the show. Because <laughs> no that happens a lot. Money. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was two, it was two people eating horse rectum. They had to eat 12 inches of horse rectum because they didn't do the horseshoes right. And then the chick who eats like 12 inches loses because the other person ate it faster. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do you want to hear like some of the fun things they had to do on uh, Fear Factor? Yeah, let me, let me get some challenge. of that. Let me, let me, I'll tell you what my factor for this fear is for okay. each one of them. Uh, would you eat uh, cheese just completely covered with maggots wriggling inside of it? Yes. Okay. Because maggots are, they're basically like living rice. Oh, sure. Yeah. You could uh, douse a little bit of wasabi on that. Oh my God. Was it like a salad block of cheese? Pretty much, yeah. Oh my god, were the maggots alive? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. Why cheese? Why not just raw meat? Why not really just traumatize Well, raw meat, meat can uh, fuck you up internally. Like, basically, this all had to be tested and deemed, like, actually edible before oh, it would go on air. Jesus. Uh, buffalo and sheep testicles. Those oh. are two separate episodes. But just oh. raw balls. Raw? No, I mean, they, they boil them. Boiled balls. I guess if I could eat them in one bite, I'd do it. But the moose ones, no, those gotta be some big-ass balls. Okay. This was one where you had to, like, um, throw the horseshoes again, and then ha- whatever, however good you did determined how many um, just uh, ounces, fluid ounces, of donkey piss or cum you would have to drink. Donkey cum? Yes. That one was so gross it never made it to air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They were just, yeah, drinking donkey cum. Did they actually make yes, them drink piss? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, piss and cum. Piss, was piss a popular thing on Fear Factor? I never uh, watched Fear no. Factor because I just fucking play like Paper Mario. Oh, sure. No, it was more insects. Insects were huge on uh, on Fear Factor. They were so big, it's, so, it's almost mediocre at this point. It's pache. <laughs> it's like watching Solo nowadays. I mean, I can't even get hard to this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, give me some of the other Fear Factor mo- Fear Factor moments. Top ten. Watchmojo.com. Uh, they would give you. They would give you. That's actually what I looked at somewhat. <laughs> God. That's my research. I watch YouTube. 
Uh, they had like uh, your hand, your arms strapped down, and they had piercings, and each piercing would get a little bit bigger, and you would have ten piercings in total in your arm, and then they would pull them out, and it would just bleed and bleed. <laughs> Oh my god! And like, like they were doing like a, a like an inch gauge. Whenever you get to the end, it was bad. An inch? I, not that much, but it was bad. It was a deep, deep gauge. So they were just piercing your arm. Yeah, yeah they were just sticking your arm with piercing needles. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Oh, uh, they had bobbing and blood at one point. They just had like a giant barrel full of blood. I don't know if it was cow's blood or like sheep's blood or something. And you had to dump Duncan for it for whatever what? was at the bottom. Oh fuck! Yeah, just raw blood. Uh, cow eyeball juice. Ooh. Yeah, you had to squeeze the eyeballs and drink the juice. Oh, <laughs> that's like that episode of uh, Grizzly Man or whatever, mm. where he like was in the desert and he took the elephant poop and he like wrapped it in a sock and squeezed it <laughs> Just... to drink the water. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Why well, that guy? Went, and then went three feet to the left to his hotel room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that guy loves drinking his own piss. Like the thing that he's happiest to do for his TV shows is just. <laughs> Drinking piss. Yeah, dr- his own. He doesn't drink others' piss. That'd be gross. Yeah, he knows what's in his. Yeah. Uh, mostly monster. He drinks nothing but monster in his own piss. He's a gamer like us. <laughs> the gamer at heart. <laughs> oh, oh, and then uh, one time they just had comp- whole dead rats, and they stuck them in a blender, and they had to eat rat soup. Uh. Yeah, and then someone, uh, the two people were racing to eat the rat soup, and then one of them came at, like slightly below the other one and got kicked off. Uh. So he drank most of a bat bowl of rat soup and lost. But, but isn't there blood in like bones? Yeah, yeah. What do but, you do with the bones? Do you eat around them? They, 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 I don't know if they faked it, but they got a shot of a whole rat in a blender and they blended it up and. They showed a rat getting blendered. Yeah, on dead rat, TV? dead rat. But yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one where it was just, like, an insect body bag, and, like, you would basically, you would have to, like... Oh, yeah. my God. So, okay. This sounds like it's a bag that you jump into that's full of insects, and they close you in it. No, it's actually, it's funner than that. You start out in the body bag, and then they just slowly funnel in the insects as time goes on. And you're trying to, like, un... You're trying to, like, undo some keys and shit, but you're in, like, a morgue thingy-mabob, like that slot that they put the deads in. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, just with, like, insects and maggots wiggling around. There was another one where you have to stick your own head up through this thing with just a bunch of flies and, like, maggots wriggling around. And you have to just see how long your head can stick in there. Fucking shit. Yeah, uh, but with the rat thing, actually, somebody tried to sue ABC for uh, two and a half mil because he said whenever he saw the rat get blended, his blood pressure rose until he felt dizzy and lightheaded, and then he vomited. He claimed that his disorientation was so severe that he ran into a doorway and seriously injured himself. <laughs> I can just imagine him, like, <laughs> sitting in a lazy book. Oh, fuck! You know that vibe where it's like, oh, shit! A rat! Like a guy <laughs> jumping and dancing and sad, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. he does the drop kick, he just hits a fucking doorway. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then it also got criticized uh, by uh, U.S. electricity uh, utility companies. Because one of the stunts was you climb through a simulated electrical substation with electrified wires, with simulated sparks and electrical sounds. And then they said that could be uh, dangerous because viewers might attempt to climb through a rail substation with potentially fatal results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Billy, we're going to make our own fear factor. <laughs> yeah. We're going to make our own fear factor. Take this fork and stick it in the outline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you're uh, too afraid to do it. Billy does it, then his father screams at him for not doing it six years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you cost me $50,000, mistake. Yeah. And some of the fucking newspaper. God damn it, I wish I wouldn't have come in your mother. God, Joe, stop. Well, that's what they would say. I thought you were going to say, well, that's what happened. And I was going to say, yes, technically. Mm. But you need to stop. Do I? Yes, Joe. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm like Cedric. Fuck. I'm just obese and I'm going to die of a heart attack. One of the websites I was using for research for this episode had a lot of opinions about game show hosts. Mm. Oh, they don't like Alex Trebek? No, they call him Alex fucking something dumb. <laughs> yeah, Alex Hook Nose. It was, you're on a white supremacist website. That's why, Tad. I was on Stormfront.com yeah, yeah, yeah. slash game shows. Yeah, it was just a bunch of people's names followed by the three, like, uh, parentheses. Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah. I saw uh, Billy Bob Thornton is on there because he hosted... Well, he's one of the only good ones. <laughs> the mythical good... I don't think he's No, he's Jewish. not Jewish. He's, uh, that's why. That's why he's one. 
Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm born again now. And, like, he said, uh, he was in uh, David Lynch's Mulholland Drive in, like, a bit part. And he said that he could feel real evil coming from that film. And he wouldn't do it again if offered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's just dumb. And his daughter's a slut. <laughs> okay, John. No, just that's saying, Hannah Montana. You're just saying mean things. That's not mean, that's a fact. <laughs> you know she what just else? keeps spreading her legs and rubbing a fake dildo on it on their stage routine <laughs> and licking it. Oh, she's making more money than me or you? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Jesus. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, Joe, do you have any final moments to make me regret having this podcast? What, what, having me on as a guest again? (laughs) Yeah, you know where I have to constantly go through the entire audio and edit your screaming down? I'm just a loud person. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not allowed on the podcast. Oh, okay. I understand. I'm not allowed. I'm in, I'm I'm in be quiet jail. Yeah, I'm going to fucking tip your stupid chair over. I don't think the chair's stupid. I mean, it's your furniture, so if that says anything, <laughs> it, it's like I'm rubber and your glue, and whatever you say bounces off of my ass and sticks to your crotch. What? Anyway, <laughs> so that was uh, that was a uh, podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Technically, think, it's uh, let me tell you about. <laughs> I think we did a good one. I don't know. That, that some white shit. supremacist looking asshole wasn't here, so we're good yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That skinhead Nazi fuck <laughs> with like all the dumb anime games and he I don't changed know. his name from Alex fifty five to Alex eighty eight. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Is he fourteen eighty eight? It's a um a Stephen King bad no. movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom I don't Cruise, remember what it is. Dumb look-alike. I think it's like eighteen. I don't know. There's a white supremacist thing that has oh, to do with oh, 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 yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> do you know why it's eighty eight? Uh, no, it's something. To, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's something I, fucking stupid in white. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 wait. Is it something about the Nazi Party when it went to power? I don't. Well, I, I know there's something like two means like Heil Hitler, like two H's, and I. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't follow it all. I don't know. I know. I know. I know the code for every time a cop gets beat. That's what I follow. What is that? I don't know. It's probably just like thirteen oh nine. Cops down. <laughs> They're sucking his dick right now. Jesus. The protesters Occupy Wall Street is sucking a cop's dick right now. We have to go rescue him. The only me I take. The only time I take yeah, yeah, a yeah. knee the only... is to suck a hero officer's dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only knee I take is to go with just. Ugh, knee, a goddamn hippie right in the spine. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you can find the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, okay. Spotify. Well, I mean, they already found it. They're here. Yeah, Where else would they be? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Joe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta do blue chew now, or, or we gotta get fake our dick pills and get our dicks all hard? <laughs> Listen, what, what's what's the stuff that Alex Jones shills? Oh, well, he loves capsules. Like, he loves, like, protein pills, and, like, he loves, like, selling just buckets of food that you can store whenever the nuclear holocaust happens, and you can just <laughs> eat out of a bucket now. So, uh, yeah. Just you can buckets f- of soup. You can find us on all those platforms. I am over on uh, Malevolent Movies. Uh, we do, uh, kind of, ho- like, really shitty indie horror movies. We just point and make fun of them. Because uh, they couldn't do what we could do on Butcher the Bakers, which is on uh, Amazon Prime. I play kind of like a little demon-possessed boy, running them up without a shirt on. <laughs> yep, you can yep. go enjoy that if you like. Yep, uh, originally he was supposed to not have any pants on either in one of the scenes, but apparently Joe didn't want to commit an well, illegal act. Yeah, yeah, because the problem with that is I would have been running nude just through the streets screaming and yelling, and I would have brought undue attention on myself in the production. <laughs> <laughs> My little weenie would be flapping about, and it would be tripping over Yeah, it, it would, be sm- it would uh, frighten a small child. My 2.5 inches would shock a lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... 3.1, depending on my mood. <laughs> So on Twitter, I measured it. it's Let Me Tell You PD, um, Discord in the description, Patreon in the description as to why you would willingly give money away to yeah. hear Joe talk about cum. Well, whatever. It's fine. Here's the thing. If you want to give <laughs> me money. This is the last thing I'm going to allow you to say before I end the episode, Joe, so you better make it good. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to give me magic cards, uh, message me on the Discord. I'm like, uh, I'm the real Joe Buck, I think. And you, I'll send you my address. I'll send you my home address if you want to just mail me shit. <laughs> He'll send you his home address and his schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My schedule of when I'll be around. <laughs> List of his greatest fears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, my, where my parents live. <laughs> it's At my place. home, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> okay. they haven't thrown me out yet. All right, and I just live in the basement, and they just... My mom My mom actually learned to knock now, because sometimes I'll just completely take off all my clothes and I'll be sitting at my computer. She'll come in to, like, show me a cat or something, and, like, I'll just have to turn around. 
Jesus Christ, my life is sad. <laughs> Goodbye. Yep, see ya.